Similar to other genres of music, rock music is reinventing itself with new production methods and sound, despite a lot of people talking about rock being dead. Really? King Gizzard was formed in 2010 in Melbourne, Australia. The band had seven members, actually. Yeah, you've heard right. They had seven members, now they have six. Stu McKenzie on vocals, flute and guitar, Cook Crack and Joe Walker are the other guitar players, Lucas Skinner on bass and, and Michael Kavanagh and Eric Moore on drums. Yeah, they had two drums. When I was doing the script, Eric Moore left the band to focus on Flightless Records. And finally, and Bruce Ken Smith with synthesizers and harmonica. The first thing you'd probably think is how do they manage the band and all the creative stuff, right? Yeah, I would think the same, but they've released 15 albums already and yeah, making album is not a problem. Stuma Kings is kinda the mastermind behind the band. With King Gizzard, all their music is created collectively with infinity energy and creative control. Contrary to a lot of artists nowadays who are doing everything by themselves and making solo careers. And I forgot to tell you something really important, there is no major label behind them. All King Gizzard albums are released by their own record label called Flightless Record, founded by Eric Moore, former drummer back in 2012. So with their own label they can coordinate and figure out all the process from productions and management. This is by far one of the greatest things about King Gizzard their pluralism, which allows them to work under constant innovation by their music and aesthetic concepts every new release. And by that it is not possible to define a sound for King Gizzard. It's a constant experimentation that has a concept, idea and objective. The band explores a new different world in every new album. Even if it's a new thing, a new sound, a new tendency or a concept, you can see that sound is a King Gizzard sound. Of course, they are most known for psychedelic rock. They have multiple albums but they can create and produce great records in different genres, always adding different and creative elements and experimentations. They started the band releasing some singles in 2010 and after that they released their first EP, Anglesia, in 2011. They also released their second EP called Willisby's Beach in the same year. With this second EP, the band managed to play their first festival gig at the Australian festival called Meredith Music Festival. Garage Rock, by the way, was the major genre on their debut album 12 by Bruce, released in 2012. This record was produced under unorthodox methods. An example of that, the fourth track 12 by Bruce was recorded on four iPhones at the same time in a row while Mr. McKenzie was singing in one of the devices. This was a Garage Rock album, but you can actually see some psychedelic elements reminding acid rock with their tripping lyrics and instrumentation. The second album, Eyes Like the Sky, was released in 2013. It brought a different sound, mixing occidental sonorities inspired by war themes and Wild West movies with elements of garage rock and desert rock, classified as spaghetti western, the type of sound created for West Wide Movies soundtracks OSTs. The Spoken Word album was written in a partnership with Ambrose's father, Broderick Smith, a multi-instrumentalist who is also an actor and was part of so many Australian bands such as Carson and the Dingles. In the same year, they released their third album, Float Along Fewer Lungs. The remarkable thing about this record is their psychedelic rock with long and long and long solos and playful lyrics. One example of that is a song called Head on Pill, which is by far one of their best songs. In 2014, they released Oddmans and I'm in Your Mind First. Both continued this psychedelic experimentation. However, Oddmans was more criticized for being a compilation of non-selected songs from other albums and for not having a specific concept. On the other hand, I'm in Your Mind First was a huge success. They brought fantasy themes, basically the record is a concept of controlling your mind and had a solid production. He is considered to be the first album of a supposed trilogy, followed by the 2016 record Nonagon Infinity and the 2017 Murder of the Universe. Yeah, I thought it was a trilogy as well, but it was just made up by their fans. 
The next album was Quarters, one of the most conceptual records from King Gizzard. Released in 2015, the record is divided into four tracks, and each of them has the exact same time, 10 minutes and 10 seconds, making each song a quarter of the record. The four tracks are a combination of psychedelic rock with jazz, with instrumentation jam, and have a smoother style compared to the previous records. One of the best tracks on this record is The River, you should definitely check that out later. In the same year, they created their own festival called Giz Fest, which takes place every year in Melbourne, Australia, with two days of festival having King Gizzard as a headline. In 2015, they also released the record Paper Mache Dream Balloon, some less solid acoustic songs and relatively shorter than the other albums. In 2016, Nonagon Infinity was born, one of the heaviest records by King Gizzard. This record is a crazy thing, it's, it mixes progressive rock, psychedelic, heavy metal in 90 tracks connected in an infinite loop. The end of each track connects to the beginning of the following track. And just as the album was described, it is in effect an endless wreck. This was one of the King Gizzard most critically acclaimed albums which even won the Best Recording Industry Association Music Awards for the Best Hard Rock Heavy Metal category. The category for which the album Nonagon Infinity became a winner was widely discussed. Since it's not a hard rock or heavy metal album, at the end of the day, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard makes their own record, reinvents the genres and really leaves doubts in people's minds. But the fact is that it's not so important compared to the greatest of their entire repertoire. Well, 2016 is over and there were no other releases of new albums. Okay, cool, no big deal, right? To make up to the fans, King Geezer promised to release 5 albums in 2017. This became one of the band's great brands. Well, an award or even a performance at a major festival might be considered a milestone for some group. For King Gizzard, it's the famous 5 albums in a year. The first one was Flying Marco Tono Banana, released in February. Built over Marco Tono music, a more technical concept that basically means shorter intervals between notes, this record is a mix of psychedelic rock with progressive rock and Middle Western sounds. Its famous tracks Rattlesnake which had already been released in 2016, which the announcement of the five albums gained a tripping graphic design is my passion video clip directed by Jason Galea, the visual artist responsible for all albums covers of the band. The second album of the year came in June, entitled Murder of the Universe. It was described by the band as a concept album to end all concepts. It is divided into three chapters, using spoken word as storytelling and it really tells fantastic stories through progressive rock with influences from psychedelic and metal. It is considered one of the band's uh, heaviest albums and each chapter has its own story. The first is about the tale of Altered Beast, a tale about a human being who falls into temptation and wants to become a beast. But both the human and monster sides end up losing their identity and, and dying of insanity. The second chapter, The Lord of Light vs Balrog, is inspired by the battle between light and darkness represented by two entities. The third and final chapter, entitled Hanta Yumi, The Murder of the Universe, tells the story of a cyborg who creates a vomiting machine and ends up killing the universe. All their stories are much crazier than that, but to fully understand, you have to listen to the whole thing to unravel all their details. Then, Sketches of Broom Whiskey East was released in August. The album combines jazz fusion with psychedelia and was made in collaboration with the jazz band Mighty Hat Club by a suburb of Melbourne called Broom's Whiskey East and the jazz album Sketches of a Pain by Miles Dave released in 1960. In November, the fourth album of the year was made available in a different way. Polygon Wanna Land follows the progress psychedelic line and was released for free without copyright through the King Geezer website, giving fans total freedom to share however they wanted, including creating their own art. It was an album described by the band as belonging to anyone who wanted to listen and not to King Geezer. But it was November already and after all, they had promised 5 albums in 2017, and they did it. Gumboot Soup, the last album of the year, was released on December 31st and ends the journey of the 5 albums in 2017. It is consistent, but didn't bring a lot of the concept and the new sound, because it was made out of some discarded songs from the other records, and they had to work until Christmas to be able to keep the promise. But in the end, everything worked out, and King Gizzard managed to release the 5 records within a year, 
and still did it while being on tour. In 2018, there were no studio albums again, but in 2019, King Gizzard released two more albums. The first was Fishing for Fishes, released in April. This album immerses itself in a fusion of psychedelic rock and blues in an experimental aura, having a softer and quieter sound, showing again a new face of the band that would soon be countered by the new release in Fast the Rest Nest, bursting listeners' speakers in August. This album had King Gizzard talking to trash metal and exploring heavy metal, in addition to elements of progressive rock and hard rock, and was even inspired by the sound of bands like Metallica, Exodus and Remistain. In addition, the themes deal with today's real social issues mixed with fantasy. In 2020, they also released four live albums, the first three live in Adelaide, live in Paris and live in Brussels, released in January in a series which aims at raising money to help in fighting forest fires in Australia. All profits from the three albums went to the cause. Finally, in April of 2020, the fourth live album was released, entitled Chunky Sharpnell, which was also released as a film with videos with videos of the band in presentations on the European tour. The idea was that the premiere would be made in a Melbourne cinema, but due to the Covid pandemic, the film was shown on Vimeo, being available for 24 hours straight for one week. It is possible that there will be another release happening in 2020. Since the unpublished single Honey was released on July 15 and brings a more folk sphere combined with the characteristics psychedelic of the band. They also released the documentary Ready in 2020, available for free on YouTube. Ready shows us the story behind the album in Fast the Rest Net. The album also won a special game called Red Game, available on the band's website. It looks like they I really enjoy making this record. And in the end, with everything we discussed, we have 6 mm. musicians, 15 studio albums, 4 live albums, a film, a documentary, a festival, over a million and four hundred thousand monthly listeners on Spotify, thousands of fans and countless ways to make, produce, launch and promote music. King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard has so much content that it's impossible to fully define it. It is an extremely 2020 band always active in producing all kinds of music with originality and creativity. There is no other band currently doing what they do and rock remains alive and pulsating in its very face with their sound. There is always something to expect from King Gizzard. But what exactly? Well, we can only find out whenever they have something new to present. It's like waiting and not knowing what you're expecting, even though you know for sure it will be surprising and wonderful.